uh, Constride. Take it away. Thank you, Dean. Um, so I want to start off by saying that Finfall is here for you. Uh, we are working in your interests. Um, from day one of this campaign, we released a comprehensive manifesto that touched the most important departments of the government. Um, we have a team of experienced individuals um, that will be going to the Oireachtas and even into government if we're giving the chance. Most parties have failed us and let's opt for a revitalized thing. Um, one with new people, one with uh, one that brings a new movement to the table. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Constride, for that opening statement. And now, finally, to our now third representative of this debate, we go to William Clarkson, representing Sinn Féin. Thank you very much indeed. Since day one, Sinn Féin have always strived to bring forward Irish unification and progress the ideal of Irish nationalism. Through the manifesto produced by Sinn Féin, it is evident that uh, Sinn Féin have a, a variation of... Oh, sorry, I just moved have a variation of different plans to bring Ireland forward, which includes reforming the Department of Defence and Aerospace, as well as bringing um, rejuvenation to our public services. Much like many of our other political opponents here, uh, Sinn Féin has a variation of characters in the cabinet, which will bring um, effective and productive change to Ireland. Hopefully this has answered many of your questions regarding Sinn Féin's stance, and I thank you very much, Dean. Um, f uh, thank you very much, uh, Clarkson, for your opening statement. Now, I am being told by um, the people at the helm of our broadcast that um, some of the audio was not picked up towards the start. So we will have to go back to uh, the representative for the Labour Party, Valorist, in order to repeat his statement, as the audio apparently did not come through properly. So, Valorist, if you would uh, take the time to repeat. Uh, I appreciate that, Dean. Uh going to just repeat it basically word for word. Sinn Féin, uh, they left it to just 10 minutes before we were meant to start this debate until they decided to show up. Uh, that kind of indecisiveness proves how, quite frankly, how unelectable they are. They weren't sure if they wanted to come and represent themselves and more importantly, represent you, the citizens of Ireland, here at this debate. That's just the same way that they fail to represent your interests in government. Earlier today, Labour delivered one of the greatest manifestos this country has ever seen. It outlined step by step how we're going to restore Ireland back to its full glory. I read Sinn Féin's manifesto, uh, and it's just a duplicate of mine from a few months ago. Uh, it has no real policy. Most of it is just maintain and keep the same. That's not a party with ambition. Labour is the party of ambition. We're not here to give you empty promises. We're not here to keep things the same. We're here to make serious, meaningful change. We're here because we know exactly what we have to do. For far too long, we've sat on the sidelines as we've watched incom incompetence take over the reins of government. I don't know about you guys, but I've absolutely had enough. I've had enough of it. It's time to put a government, it's time to put in place a government that cares and a government that will get the job done. And most importantly, it's time for a government that's on your side. It's time for Labour. Uh, thank you very much, Valorist, for your opening statement there. Now, uh, hopefully our audience has a rough idea of what each party stands for, but of course the public wants to know more in any healthy democracy. That's a good thing, which is why we have many of the audience's questions collected by Warner Media over the past few hours and so forth, um, which the first question, which is to all representatives with us tonight, is as follows. Following the resignation of Chief Justice Nicola, do you have a replacement prepared? If you are elected, we'll go in reverse order. So we'll start with William Clarkson of Sinn Féin. Thank you very much, Dean. As uh, Nicola's resignation as Chief Justice has not been um, that long ago, we do not have a current replacement. However, we will look for an active and competent individual to replace him in his capacity as Chief Justice. Obviously, this individual's um, uh, traits would have to be examined properly to ensure that this individual is appropriate for the position. Um, yes, that's about it. Thank you. Um, if we have any more information regarding an applicant for the position of Chief Justice, you will be informed. Thank you very much, Dean. Mm -hmm. um, now is probably the time to say, now that we are getting into questions, other representatives can, um, for lack of a better term, butt in if they really feel the need to refute their opponent's points. But um, 
unless there's anything to say from other representatives, we'll move to um, we'll move to Fianna Fáil and Constride. Thank you, Dean. Um, so I echo much of what Sinn Féin has just said. Um, the resignation of the Chief Justice is recent, and as a result, we do not have currently um, someone to fill that post. However, I do believe that we have people in our party capable enough, um, knowledgeable of the law to fit that cut. And if we do have someone who wants to step up to the role, by all means, we will let everyone know. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Constride. Um, unless there are any sort of refutations to be done, if that's even a word, um, Valorist of the Labour Party. Thank you, Dean. Now, listen, um, all I heard from the other parties is that, oh, it's way too recent. We, we've got no plan at all to replace him. The moment he resigned, Labour was out there looking for a replacement. We were throwing names around uh, in the Labour Central Office. We were, we were preparing to get a replacement in day one, the moment we got into office because the Chief Justice resigned to come and join us. He knew that we're the best party. He's come to represent us. And it's paramount that we find a replacement immediately. Labour's plan is to ensure we build the judiciary, something Sinn Féin couldn't do. And that's going to be under a Chief Justice who we know will be competent and strong. And that name will appoint a Chief Justice within the first two weeks of our administration. Thank you, Dean. Right. Uh, do any of the can representatives have any other further points to make regarding uh, the question at all from anyone? Indeed, I do. Go if, ahead. If the Labour Party were looking for a replacement since day one, surely that, that would not be given enough time to find a suitable and appropriate candidate with the right qualifications. So can the representative of the Labour Party please tell me how on earth he, could he find a, a, an appropriate replacement for Chief Justice within 24 hours? Thank you, Dean. Mm -hmm. Any response, Valorist? No response at all. I think uh, Sinn Féin's plan is just is fully... Uh, I can't agree with anything that Sinn Féin say, really, Dean. Mm -hmm. Any further comments at all, gentlemen? I don't believe so. Uh, we will move on to the next question, which I believe... Um, I don't actually know what party it's directed towards, so I might actually have to move on from it. I'll come back to it, but it doesn't mention the party it's actually directed towards. And we've already had one technical mess up this evening. Um, so I'll move on to the very next question, which is, um, I believe, to other parties um, regarding Sinn Féin, which is asking, what do you think about Sinn Féin's government planning to deploy troops in the Katangan Civil War earlier this term? This is an anonymous question, and I will direct that uh, to Constride first. If Constride is here, of course. Constride, are you with us? I won't waste time. Valorist, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Dean. That is massive injustice. Massive injustice. And and when those rumours were first coming through, I've seen the screenshots um, of, of Michael speaking to Lynette, saying that he wanted to send ugly troops into Katanga uh, to deal with the coup that was going on right there. That is a massive injustice. That's wrong. And that is a terrible blight on Sinn Féin. Because it shows that their their proposed Tornister, who's still at that party, still in a high role, uh, tried to what I view as illegally uh, put our troops into a conflict where they do not belong. He was going to put our troops' lives at risk to serve his own interests in Katanga. Because anyone that's watching this will remember, uh, Mike was served as Prime Minister of Katanga uh, before he came and became Taoiseach. Right, the fact that he was willing to put our troops. Uh, on the ground in that nation proved that he was going to go there and serve his own interests with the lives of our soldiers. That is, a, that is wrong. It's horrible. It's terrible. And every single person uh, standing next to me should join me in condemning Michael and in turn Sinn Féin for even considering that as a possibility. Thank you, Valorist. Uh, Constride, are you with us again? Uh, if you are, just unmute very quick. I don't think he is. Uh, we'll go to Sinn Féin for a... Um, rebuttal on what uh, Valorist has said. Are you with us, Clarkson? Indeed. Mm -hmm. Thank you very Go much, ahead. Dean. I would like to agree to uh, with Valorist that sending tr our Irish troops to Katanga to serve personal gain is absolutely uh, a display of injustice. 
Under my new administration, I will ensure that the Department of Defence will not even consider a prospect of sending our troops abroad for a, for a, for a, for a sorry for a fatuous reason which concerns the personal gain. But they the, did. They did consider it. Yes, um, indeed. However, under my new administration, Sinn Féin will not even be considering that prospect and instead hopes to put uh, Ireland's military into good use. But with him, how can they how can they trust you when you say that? Because p the people know that you your party tried to put ugly boots on the ground in Katanga. You can't just sit here and say, oh, we're not going to do that anymore. How are they meant to trust you since you literally did try to do it? Well, um, as I say, under the new administration, let's just hope one can bring suitable change. Is any more being said on that question, gentlemen? Nothing more, Dean. Nothing All right. Um, is, is Constride with us once again, or is he... He's definitely not here right now. Um, no matter, we will move on to the very next question um, on our lovely user-submitted list. Uh, the next question uh, was directed at the Zoho Democrats, but they are not here, so we're going to have to move over that again. Um, but we do have a question that goes to all party leaders present, which is... The following we all know that business is usually filled with just career fairs but what will you do to actually help businesses um we will direct this first of all to william clarkson thank you very much dean under the new uh, department of business um enterprise and innovation the minister uh, of such department uh, philosopher quincy will work actively to um, promote new public services within ireland's private sector as well as as previously mentioned, hosting career fairs, which will not just be used as filler policy for the Sinn Féin government if we were to be elected, but for actual productive use. Thank you. Nothing further from me in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, we will go to Valorist and then we'll make a last-ditch effort to see if Constride is with us. Uh, thank you, Dean. Listen, businesses, I think, would first benefit from a census that they can trust would actually work, right, instead of a, a really questionable bot full of issues uh, and, and just full of mistakes, right? Uh, for Celia Quinley, obviously the, uh, the Sinn Féin, I believe, proposed minister for business, enterprise, innovation, he did a terrible job uh, last term across the board and Sinn Féin have gone with him again. I mean, from what I'm looking at, I don't think William has trust in his own cabinet. And uh, Literally two minutes ago, he said that his own tarnished have committed a massive injustice. Uh, so, you know, Sinn Féin have clearly, they've got no clue what they're doing. Uh, but Labour, uh, they're going to start by creating, we're going to start by creating the Central Statistics Office. Right, we're going to be conducting the census properly. We're going to be keeping track of employment numbers throughout our term uh, so that the government can be on top of delegating necessary resources to the necessary departments and industries to ensure that there's equal growth among all departments. Right, That's, that's the most important part. We need to make sure we keep track of employment uh, so that we understand when job fairs, if job fairs are useful or not. Because right? right now, there's no evidence to prove that job fairs, career fairs are useful. But the parties next to me are going to be saying, yeah, let's do career fairs. They're going to be so good. There's no proof to see if they, if they work. So the Labour have got our plan in place to not, only, to not only see if job fairs will work and work towards improving employment, but keeping track of them. That's radical. That's good change. That's the Labour Party. And thank you, Valerist. Um, any further comments from um, Clarkson or Constride? Anything to say? None further, thank you. Right. Uh, anything from you, Constride? Still not with us? We'll come back to him later on. We will move to our very next question. Um, it, if um, uh, we have just actually been informed by our sort of front our front desk that um, the representative for Fianna Fáil, Constride, um, something has come up on his end and he can't make it for the rest of the debate, which is uh, fine. So we are still joined, however, by the representative for the Labour Party, Valorist, and for Sinn Féin, uh, William Clarkson. On to our very next question, however, uh, which we'll bring up here. Um, the, the next one, again, party-specific, so we cannot go to that one. But the very next one is, what are your plans for keeping the Defence Forces active? We will go to Valorist for this. Thank you, Dean. Um, I think in recent times, uh, ever since the, uh, the O'Carlanes got their hands on the Defence Forces as well, it's seen uh, good progress. Uh Personally, if I was Minister for Defence, I'm not a Minister for Business, but if I was Minister for Defence, uh, and of course under Labour, um, we need to maintain that, that uh, 
that progress, right? We need to oversee that progress. I don't think that the government should be uh, constantly involved in Og League. I don't think they should be constantly involved in defense affairs. But I think the number one thing we shouldn't be doing is trying to put our own troops where they don't belong, like Sinn Féin tried to do, right? Um, I think the most important thing is to repeal our neutrality policy. That is a very important thing. Uh, to make sure that we can do a force of good in the world and to make sure that we can bolster our role. We need to make sure that if we are going to put our troops as a boots on the ground somewhere, it's not where it's going to serve our own interests, but somewhere where it will serve Ireland's interests, right? That's the number one important thing. As well as that, we need to form international military alliances because our military, however strong it is and however capable we believe it to be, uh, it's nothing without our friends, right? We need to make sure that we build proper alliances uh, and, and create inroads within the UN to make sure that Ireland is is strong, not just on its own, but strong with its brothers as well. Thank you, Dean. And now William Clarkson. Thank you very much. Much like um, Valerie said, um, we, Sinn Féin, believe that um, strengthening, uh, strengthening military cooperation between various of our allies would be beneficial to Ireland's, poli- uh, to Ireland's military stability. But, uh, but I would like to say how ironic it is that he wishes to repeal our neutrality policy, which would surely put our troops at risk if we're not aiming for a neutral stance. So I find it um, pretty ironic that that would be said in that context. Thank you, Gene. Well, your, Any further comments? <clears throat> your Tornish uh just straight up broke our neutrality policy anyway when he tried to put boots on the ground in Katanga. Any response to that? I mean, you did say that it was a massive injustice, but that's your tarnished uh, I think you should stand by him. Well, of course, um, personal gain um, in terms of the defence force is not something that I condone as a T-shirt here. But, so why are um, you propping up Michael as tarnished Well, you see, Michael has a lot of political experience, and I believe that he would be the appropriate individual to uh, solidify Ireland's defence department as a productive and functional one. But in what context specifically? I mean, his track record there in the the Department of Defence is is shocking. I mean, that one event on its own cannot be condoned. It can't. You cannot just sit here and abide with him continuing as your Minister for Defence. Uh, considering that this Katanga event is in his track record. I thought this is a really bad thing for Sinn Féin. Like, how can you be electable if your own Minister for Defence, Antonishta, was trying to serve his own interests in sending Ogli to Katanga? Well, um, to, uh, as I say, under the new administration, Sinn Féin certainly wouldn't tolerate any event of the sort uh, appearing again. I believe Michael will join me in expressing his... Um, support in that regard but william michael is a big part of your administration he's your tarnister he's your deputy yeah. he's right behind you so Indeed. you can't just say this administration is going to be different when the same man who did that thing is right next to you if anything uh, I'd I, say, will... I think he's going to be mic- micromanaging you in your t-shot if you're i will shot. have to pause the debate real quick just to give our front desk time to breathe as um they have just said that um they need to cut the stream very quickly in order to repair the audio, I believe. So we're going to pause briefly and hopefully we'll be ordered to continue soon. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll be back oh, very let soon. Me on. Let me hop on. The representative for Sinn Féin, and it is as follows. Sinn Féin was proven to have committed voter importation, yet... Uh, yeah, nothing has really been done. I have to kind of reword this, I apologise. But um, essentially, Sinn Féin uh, found to have done voter importation and electoral offences. What are your thoughts on that, um, William Clarkson? Well, of course, electoral injustice is not something that uh, Sinn Féin would normally um, report. Well, it was, a lot, it was a, the ruling of the Electoral Commission that... Uh, the previous Taoiseach, um, Michael McGrath, was not able to campaign during this election. But of course, as stated under many categories, under the new administration, Sinn Féin will not be committing such electoral offences and will hopefully remain on the good side of the Electoral Commission. Thank you, Dean. Mm-hmm. Uh, Valorist, any comments? Um, the response smacks of irony, right? I mean, uh, this entire debate, we've heard William say oh, this, this new administration isn't going to fail like the other one. It's not going to do all the, the horrible, terrible, unethical things that the other one did. He forgets to realise 
that the person who led Sinn Féin's previous administration is his Tornishta, is right behind him. And I think Michael's going to be micromanaging um, William a little bit this term uh, if William somehow manages to win. Uh, because realistically, the people can't trust you anymore, William. They can't trust you anymore. Because all of this injustice, n- not 10 minutes ago, you said that your own Tornishta had committed the injustice. All of it, it doesn't make you an electable party. And it's really that simple. Right. I mean, if I was a voter, and I am, uh, if I was a, a regular member of the electorate and not not my capacity in the Labour Party, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to trust you. I can't trust your promises. I can't trust your pledges because they go against a lot of what you did last term, especially what you've come and said here. I think you should have come into this debate with a better plan and because I, I think you're winging it. Of course, you didn't even know you wanted to come until 10 minutes before it was meant to start. Yes, it, indeed. I was not the, sh- the original scheduled individual. There wasn't a scheduled individual. There wasn't anyone meant to come from Sinn Féin. They didn't even have your podium up. Well, we did have someone originally, but due to um, personal matters, they weren't able to attend this event. The people that run this stream, they didn't even expect you to attend, William. I mean, it's, it, it's, you can't just, I can't, I can't, like, understand. I can't take your words seriously because a lot of it just, it, it's so hard to piece together. It's hard to connect the dots because on one hand, you're saying... We don't condone uh, electoral fraud. We don't condone voter importation. We don't condone all of this. Your own Tornister did it, won a cheated mandate off the back of it, and you're going to prop him up, yeah, as Tornister. William, you, 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 have you thought any of this through? Absolutely. Otherwise, I wouldn't have proposed him as um, being in my cabinet. I believe, regardless of uh, past endeavours, Michael is the right individual for the job, and I believe he will bring adequate change to Ireland's defence force. So, yes, to answer your question, I believe I, I have full faith in my Tornister to do uh, an effective job. So, William, would you say that you you condemn uh, voter importation and, uh, you know, fraud, voter fraud in, in all, uh, all circumstances? In all circumstances, yes. Ireland is a democracy, and democracy is based on the voting um, values of the individuals, or in this case, the Irish people. Voter importation obstructs this process, and Sinn Féin stands for a more democratic island, and henceforth will not be supporting such. You see, Dean, that it's such an ironic statement, because his own Tornister did it. His own Tornister, you've just said, voter importation is an undemocratic practice. You, yes. can't, you can't win a mandate off of the back of it. Your own Tornister did that, claimed he had a mandate, uh, and went and served the full term as Taoiseach with that cheated mandate. You've just condemned voter importation and it completely conflicts with you then saying you have full faith in Michael, who's the one that, that did it. You condemned uh, the, the issues in Katanga that Michael was going to put Ogley down in there. And then you've yes. come and said that you have full faith in Michael as Minister for Defence. My friend, this does not make you sound electable. Well, I personally beg to differ. Michael has years of political experience and is the right individual for the job. Infractions that made um, stain his uh, record as a as a as, as an electable official may have appeared, but regardless of these, people do change, and I believe Michael is appropriate for this position. People do change. This is this would be like the third chance that Michael McGrath has got because I don't like bringing this up. He did ask me a while ago to stop bringing this up, but in December twenty twenty one, January twenty twenty two, the J two dossier outed him as a massive terrorist, right? We, we, Ireland, we all forgave him. Yeah, he didn't get hit on that hard in campaigning. Did we? We forgave him. I, well, uh, I think we did, Ashton. Uh, you don't really hear much about it anymore. I think Ireland as a nation forgave him for the crimes against the nation, the en- being an well, enemy of the state, effectively, right? Well, we forgave here's, my, here's my cold calling for you. Do either of you two governments plan to continue the, uh, you know, the investigation into what actually happened since it kind of just went silent? Uh, Ooh, I... I I think that we we know all we need to know, right? Michael was a yeah. terrorist. He was the leader of the the INLA. He did all of that, right? Um, noble cause or not, I don't think it was. Uh, Sinn Féin might. Those those means were were shocking, uh, and we as a nation, it's fair to say we did forgive him because. But the bodies. He... <laughs> that is enough, Ashton. Continue, Alan. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, Michael became T-Shock. You didn't hear uh, you didn't hear anything about him being a terrorist before. You didn't hear any of it. 
right? You might have heard a little little bit about it when that whole Katanga stuff came out. Nothing. We forgave him. That was the that was the second chance that that the nation gave him, right? And then you have William over here. I think, I think we do have to move on now. I'm getting the order from the network. They are going to have me summarily shot if we do not move on because we do. Um, we are being told actually that we are going to transition to the debate stage channel in the main island Discord because of the audio problems. Has got twenty five. Uh, domestic employees in total and no foreign employees so i tried to put in 25 the bot read it as two it inputted two uh i informed a registrar that this was incorrect this wasn't the right value um without being prompted the minister for business enterprise and innovation then uh, nicknamed himself me and tried to put in a number on my behalf now he didn't know the number i didn't tell the registrar the actual number because i wasn't asked the minister for business Enterprise and Innovation, who is Facilio Quinley and is being reproposed by Sinn Féin. So that man will be in power again if you decide to vote for them. He just put in a random number for me. Now, how can I know he didn't put in 50 or 60 and inflate the numbers? We can't trust the census numbers because of this bot. And because of its failures and Sinn Féin saying they're going to maintain it, quite frankly, it makes them unelectable. Um, any comments, Clarkson, in response? Well, oh, actually, um, I've got more comments he... as well. Sorry? Oh. I've got more comments. Uh, I'll wait for Clarkson. No, go on. Right, go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, recently, I was also told that Facilio Quinley, who you are proposing for Minister uh, for Business, Enterprise and Innovation, did not comply with a freedom of information request. That's illegal. Uh, now, he can, he's obviously liable to legal action for that, and that's likely to be taken. But the fact that you're proposing, I mean, it's illegal. The uh, Information Commissioner... Uh, I'm pretty sure condemned him for that uh, and recommended legal action to the people who asked for the freedom of information request. Uh, now, Clarkson, I personally want to know how you can continue to stand by Facilio after these these uh, shortcomings. And, and what was the word you used earlier? Injustice? Injustices? Well, um, I personally believe that it should be based on the individual's capacity to, ha um, to function in their profession. Uh, Facilio Quinley has displayed a great level of competence and and professionalism throughout his duty. And that is why I'm proposing him as our a continuous Minister for Business, Enterprise and Innovation. Thank you. Now, William, I'm not sure about competence and, uh, and professionalism when the main highlights of his term are a broken bot who he had to put numbers in on behalf of and failure to comply with a lawful freedom of information request, which he is liable to prosecution for. I mean... I, I wouldn't be propping up for Cilio, uh if 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 I knew that he was doing that kind of stuff, and I'm not sure why you're continuing to stand by him. Right now, I, I see no difference between you and, and Michael McGrath. You're just standing by completely illegal, wrong, and unethical practices, and in some cases, just choosing to ignore it completely. This kind of ignorance makes you unelectable, William. You, sh you Surely you can see this, right? Well, however, as you mentioned earlier, the freedom information, uh, the freedom of information request can't be prosecuted due to a lack of information given regarding the request. So, are you t attempting to mislead uh, individuals here? No, I'm not misleading anyone. I'm getting my words directly from the information Thanks. commissioner, who runs freedom of information requests. So, I mean, I, I don't think I could be misleading anyone. Uh, if you've got an, an issue with the information commissioner who runs freedom of information requests, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised since you clearly don't want to comply with a, a lawful one. So I wouldn't be surprised if you've got an issue with the, the information commissioner. I think we will move on to the very next question. Um, seeing as I'm running out as well, um, feel free to send in questions via Ireland in general. If they're, if they're good, I'll actually say them. Um, anyway, Queens, we will uh, move on to a question I asked earlier, seeing as we had one directed at Valor, I'll also repeat the one that was directed um, towards Sinn Féin, and that question is as follows, if it's remembered. It was something along the lines of, um, Sinn Féin were found to have violated uh, campaign law with the whole importation fiasco and scandal. Um, does Sinn Féin have a statement in regards to that, especially considering that the person at the centre of that, Michael McGrath, is in the proposed cabinet for Sinn Féin? Uh, Clarkson, uh, your statement. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the um, voting infraction, um, of course, under the new administration, as I've stated many times, um, Sinn, Sinn Féin will obviously attempt to follow through with the Electoral Commission's request to... Um, 
sorry, um, to follow legal practices and, and not to break them. Uh, Sinn Féin will also aim to promote this um, democratic right and will not go back on one's mistakes. Thank you very much, Dean. Mm -hmm. uh, Valorist, any response? Uh, Dean, the person who committed these undemocratic acts, and I'm pretty sure uh, William actually condemned uh, those kind of acts, these undemocratic voter importation, uh, that kind of stuff, illegal campaigning, campaigning before campaigning is open. This kind of stuff, uh, William condemned it earlier. He said right. Michael McGrath was wrong to do this, and uh, in turn, I think he condemned Michael McGrath. I uh, did not condemn Michael McGrath in question. I condemned the so you, act. So you condemned the act, but you don't con condemn the individual that committed the act. Now, I want you to walk me through your thought process there. What's the point in condemning what he did, but not the person who did it? Well, obviously, vote importation is against the um, standing requirements of the Electoral Commission's um, of, of the Electoral Commission's stance on uh, campaigning regulations. However, I do believe that Michael has moved on from these mistakes and will um, go on to be a more productive and professional individual. And that is why I've proposed him as my Minister of Defence. He has all the capabilities of um, that portfolio, and I believe he will lead Ireland in that right direction. Thank you. Dean, you remember earlier, I went through most of Michael McGrath's shortcomings in, in this uh, nation. And shown, I, I showed you how many chances we've given Michael McGrath. We gave him a chance when he got exposed as a terrorist, right? We gave him a chance, then we completely forgave it, right? Uh, we gave him a chance. We basically forgave him for the, the whole illegal voter importation, all of that stuff. We gave him a chance after that. We, we forgot about it. We let him continue with his mandate. I mean, Labour didn't. We were fighting the whole time. We didn't see anyone else fighting against that massive injustice. Uh, and now we have William here asking us to give Michael another chance, saying, I have full faith in Michael. No one else does, William. You don't see it. We all do. Michael is the weakest link. His time in politics has to be over. And I, I can't, I don't know how you're not seeing this. Mm -hmm. uh, Clarkson, any response to what Valerie said? <clears throat> well, regardless of um, how many mistakes an individual makes, if they're an impacting difference to productivity, that individual should be kept. And Michael McGrath is a huge asset to Ireland's stabi uh, political stability. And as I say, that is why I've proposed it for my Minister of Defence. I'm not going to propose individuals who will bring little change to Ireland. I'm proposing an individual who has the capabilities to bring Ireland forward. Thank you, Jean. William, you're not going to propose individuals who bring little change when your entire manifesto just says you're going to maintain this, keep the same that, maintain this, keep the same that. It's ironic that you're saying that you're not going to bring someone that's going to maintain the status quo when your party has no ambition whatsoever. I've, I've read your manifesto, I think, twice now. I don't see any, any progressive policies. I don't see any radical change. I don't see anything that makes you worth voting for. Unless we want to maintain what's been a, a, a really mediocre, lackluster government with no ambition. Well, of course, we're going to maintain the policies that make Ireland productive. But those that do not, we will, of, of course, bring change, like introducing key legislation to affect those areas which bring a negative nature. And yes, well, uh, any um, parts of the government or the departments in question which don't function right will be amended accordingly. Thank you, Dean key legislation like the local government act that got I, I think we'll I think we'll move on now because we do have quite a few questions to get through queens um we need to continue slaying so moving on we do have another question that's come in I'll, I'll keep bouncing between one towards Sinn Féin one towards Labour that kind of format um so one towards uh Labour now which I'll do if I can quickly find it oh wait there are none I'm gonna have to ask a general one um this general question that I will ask is as follows. Here we go. Yeah, found it. This one's actually interesting. Over the past several terms, we have seen the National Ambulance Service created, however, subsequently forgotten. What are the parties planning on doing to make sure the NAS is active once again and is a public service that actually slays the public? Although not slaying physically, that would be, uh, that's the army. Uh, we'll go to um, Clarkson for that first. Well, um, under the new prerogative of the, de uh, of the Department for Local Government, we will be introducing a new um, format for how the National Ambulance Service can function, and we'll also be introducing uh, 
a legislative book which concerns the structure of the National Ambulance Service and how it will function accordingly without any mistakes. Thank you, Dean. And Valorist? Thank you, Dean. Uh, the NAS, it needs serious work, right? I mean, I was the man that wrote the bill to introduce it. Uh, during my time as T-Shop, we saw it brought into Glasmo. We saw uh, general successful integration. Unfortunately, of course, Glasmo didn't come to be a very, very good game. But Bonkrana will be one, and the NES uh, will have serious uh, strength in Bonkrana. We're going to make sure of that. We're going to work with developers to ensure that NES get what they need to operate in Bonkrana properly and not just there for roleplay purposes. Uh, Sinn Féin have given no updates on the NES. What their manifesto says they're going to conduct a quick review within the first week of office pertaining to the NAS. Now, uh, as the ones that were doing the most work on it um, last last term, I, I personally would see more. I want to see more from it, from them, uh, especially their minister for local government who was spearheading their NAS campaign. Um, he, he's been accused of xenophobia and all sorts of bad stuff. They're standing by him again. Do you really want a xenophobic local government minister uh, running our NAS? I don't. Uh, I want a good man running our NAS. I don't want a xenophobe. Uh, I don't know about the people uh, watching this right now, but discrimination should never be in any kind of public service. Uh, but of course, they're standing by a, a local government minister who's been accused of that kind of stuff. I mean, uh, you you want to see more. You want to see more from Sinn Féin. You want to see the party that's just been, that's just served the full term uh, with a, an albeit cheated mandate. You want to see them giving you good policies and a reason for you to elect them again. They, 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 one, I say that with quotation marks, 91 votes last term. Uh, you you want to see them fighting for that again? They're not. Mm -hmm. uh, and Clarkson, uh, any response? Well, I would like to br uh, raise the point of, if you believe that um, we won by a cheated mandate, the government went on to be a very successful and productive one. So what are, what are your... Um, complaints about the government's uh, productivity throughout the term, which brought great change to Ireland, with over 60 foreign engagements and two massive career fairs, which really impacted Ireland's progressive n nature. Uh, it's not just me who thinks you want a cheated mandate. You, of course, condemned the other uh, vote importation and acknowledged it. So it's you as well uh, who recognised the fact that uh, your government won off the back of a, a not really democratically won mandate. But we'll move on. Uh, there's there's no real evidence to prove that career fairs work, right? That's why Labour's policy of maintaining employment numbers throughout the term and monitoring them while we host careers fairs will look to prove that careers fairs do actually make an effect, right? Because obviously we saw a massive bump in employment. I've already explained how that could probably be attributed to artificial inflation of, of those numbers, right? Because your bot messed up continuously. Simple as. I mean... It, it it doesn't make sense to me, uh, the policies that you're putting down, because they, they directly conflict with something else that you've said. Uh, any response, Clarkson? Well, on the topic of the bot, the uh, bot's uh, functionality will be corrected accordingly, and the mistakes will hopefully be rectified. In we were court. told that they were rectified. You said this an hour ago in this debate. Yes. You said the bot is now successful. It is. Facilio Quinley himself said the bot's working. He said this maybe 20 times. Every single time I criticized on him, he said the bot's working. It's working fine. And you've just now said you're going to fix and rectify the bot. You said the bot works. Now you're saying it doesn't. Are you going to make your mind up? Tell the people. They're listening. I said the bot is working. But if any future mistakes concerning the bot arise, they will be rectified accordingly. But how can, how can the people trust this bot? It's already made its mistakes. I've had countless business owners to come to me. Instead of the minister, they trust me more, the shadow minister. They've come to me and told me the bot does not work. It's inputted the wrong number. Facilio's come and put in an artificial one. How can the business owners trust the bot? I mean, if anything, I think if, he, if you try and use that bot again, business owners are just going to boycott the census. It would be a smart move considering it, the bot does not work. It's that simple. Is that all, gentlemen? Yes, that is all from me. Right, okay. Uh, we do have a question directed towards Sinn Féin here. I'll say it mostly because, um, you know, we, we all here support all us queens and princesses. We all support hashtag Brits out. So I feel like this is a very important question that's just come up, which is the following. Uh, and this is to Clarkson. In Sinn Féin's campaign, they have claimed that their party is, quote, aiming for Irish reunification, end quote. 
How do they plan on reunifying Ireland? This is directed to William Clarkson. Uh, thank you, Jean. Well, of course, as Sinn Féin's political ideological stance is for a united Ireland, we will work closely with the Northern Ireland Authority to ensure the best possible deal for a potential Irish unification. Regardless of how difficult this may be, Sinn Féin's aspiration has always been to unify Ireland, and with, under this new administration, that will not change. Thank you, Jean. Mm-hmm. And um, a question to Labour along the same topic uh, that I'll add in. Uh, does Labour have a stance towards uh, unification with Northern Ireland or a border poll at all, uh, Valorist? Uh, well, Labour's a, a Republican party, of course, right? Um, but the thing is, uh, the Irish reunification is nothing more than than idealism at this point, right? We've seen time and time again, of course, we had the, uh, the conflict of the United Kingdom government last year. Uh, term around the uh, start of August. It's not going to come, no matter how hard we try. Labour's understood this. We're realists. We understand that uh, pursuing Irish reunification is a waste of really good time that could be spent on working on uh, domestic policies, right? Fulfilling our domestic promises. Uh, everyone wants the thirty-two, right? And I think I was the T-shock that worked most towards getting it. I took, I got, I got as land off the British. Uh, they held three ports, of course. Thank you, Dean for uh filling that as well when we signed the treaty yeah, no problem yeah thank you mate uh yeah so labor have got me as tarnished up. of course i'm i'm the man that's worked the most to getting irish land uh back to ireland realistically while i do view reunification as an idealist policy uh and domestic practices should be prioritized if anyone's going to bring about irish unification your best shot is us simple as um, I have another question that I'll direct to Labour now because um, Sinn Féin's had quite a few. And this one's directed quite exactly to you, actually, like personally, um, that you are obviously in Labour, uh, not not in that way, you're in the Labour Party of Ireland. Um, and you obviously used to lead uh, Sinn Féin and used to be a T-shirt for Sinn Féin. This question is asking, uh, why did you jump between parties and are you planning a return to Sinn Féin at any point in the future? Now my jump at, my jump of parties was unprecedented, right? You don't really see former Tishi just switch to a different party like that, right? But the fact is Labour came to me and gave me an offer and I couldn't refuse that kind of offer, right? They gave me the chance to, to stand by one of my best friends, uh, Tom Whitaker, one of the strongest men that I know, to stand by him and give Ireland a better future. Now, when I, see, when I saw Michael McGrath in, in charge of Sinn Féin and when I see William Clarkson in charge of Sinn Féin now, I just don't, I don't see them taking Ireland in the right direction. Uh, I see them running not only their own party, but the nation into the ground. Tom mm-hmm. Whitaker is the man that can change that. Tom Whitaker will send us on a path upwards rather than downwards he'll send us towards progress rather than regression and maintenance he'll put us forward and it's as simple as that and that's why i i decided to stand by him and why i continue to stand by him at labor Mm -hmm. um i will grant william clarkson the ability to respond to that if he wishes um of course um bear with me a moment i would like to um uh, announce that when tom was Oh, wait a minute, it's having a bit of technical errors. That's all right. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, you can continue. Um, I would like to comment on um, how Valerus says that to- uh, Tom is one of his closest political colleagues. Um, if, you- if Ireland really wants um, its political uh, party and government to lead them in the right direction, surely that they want... Th- that leader of the political organisation to show up to the legislation uh, to the legislative body, being the Dal in this case. I would like to point out that um, Tom's uh, attendance to the Dal was quite poor, and he was not there um, at every session like I was. How can uh, the Irish people rely on a proposed leader of Ireland who can't even show up to legislative sessions? Baffles me. Do tell. William, I've sent, the, I've sent the Oractus link in the general chat. You'll see that Tom's attendance was, in fact, 100% to the door. So you've effectively just lied to everyone here. Not effectively. He yeah, arrived, not effectively. He arrived you have. for several sessions, which um, didn't allow him to vote on certain legislative procedure. I was there from the start, and that's why Sinn Féin is the right direction, as we maintained good attendance throughout the term, and that is why 
we are the most approachable and electable party. Uh, William, Tom has all greens, and green means attended 100%, well, between 80 and 100% of the session. Tom yes. voted on uh, literally every piece of legislation. You are lying to the people right now. I am not lying to the people. I'm merely saying that he arrived late to several sessions, which would impact on his voting abilities to the legislation. Do you have any evidence I will have that? to sadly interrupt you both. We do have a member of the public who is about to deliver a question via voice call. Um, I will welcome either Ashton or Dean, whoever the moderator is for this, to bring them on to uh, speak very quickly and ask their lovely question. We'll see them in just a second. Here we go. Uh, oh, it's Jeremy. Jeremy Mahomey, how are you doing? Ask a question. Uh, I'm not too bad. Good evening, uh, party leaders. Uh, I just have one very quick question on foreign relations. How do the parties wish to improve foreign relations, and is there any specific country they wish to uh, target to improve those foreign relations? Uh, I will go to Clarkson for that. Thank you very much, and I thank uh, Jeremy for his question regarding the Foreign Office. Um, throughout the uh, Sinn Féin's previous term, the Irish Foreign Office maintained a global uh, sense of cooperation with multiple nations, so that I personally believe that uh, targeting one specific nation to maintain good diplomatic structure is not the right way to go. If Ireland wants a more cooperative international stance, it would be more reasonable to cooperate with each um, and every country in the international sphere to um, guarantee international cooperation and diplomatic appropriation. Thank you. Um, now, Valorist? Uh, of course, uh, international cooperation is extremely important. That's why Labour's pledging to, uh, to, unlike Sinn Féin, who in terms of the foreign department, just had sit downs with a bunch of nations and said, hi, how are you doing at Ivy House every single week? Uh, we're going to work on international cooperation by making military alliances to strengthen Oglik Nairn, uh, as opposed to Sinn Féin proposing putting their boots on the ground in Katanga to fight their own interests. Uh, in terms of international cooperation, uh, we're going to repeal the Neutrality Act to get more involved uh, in the international sphere. Uh, we're going to have a Commonwealth tour. Uh, we're going to Make sure we are we stand strong side by side uh, with our brothers internationally, uh, and we're going to make sure that, unlike Sinn Fein, we don't just sit down and have a chat with them every week. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, thank you very much, Jeremy, for your question. Uh, you are allowed to go back to your chair in the audience. We do. We have just been informed that the uh, representative for Fina Fall is back. We do have a representative, um, Connor F. Ahern, I'm not going to try to pronounce that surname. Connor is here, and he's going to represent... You said it perfectly, uh, that was perfect. All right, but yes, welcome, Connor. Uh, I will actually ask a question to you, because we did have um, a Fianna Fáil-related question earlier this evening that I couldn't ask due to Connor Stride being away, but we will ask it um, now. Uh, this is from an anonymous um, person, and they have asked, why did your party support Sinn Féin throughout their term in office, despite... Um, accusations of sexism, xenophobia, leaks, and proposals of deploying troops in Katanga for personal reasons. Um, so go ahead, Connor, take it away. Thank you for the question. Um, so the outline was sexism. Uh, I think that was also proven by someone, but we have evidence that the phrase, if I can try to find the phrase, it was something to do with screaming like women, if I'm correct. That was not intended to be sexist, therefore we continue to support Sinn Féin. Um, and that's why we didn't drop out of the government or anything like that. And we believe that Sinn Féin really did carry the country through, and that's why we've continued to support them and everything they've been doing. And they had a pretty stable government for the most part. Uh, Connor, it doesn't matter about your intentions. If you say screaming like woman, that's sexist, whether you meant it to be sexist or not. Is it sexist? Define how it's sexist. Screaming like woman. Are you not seeing this? Not really. Have you not ever said that before? <laughs> no, I have never said that before, Connor. I do hear it on a daily basis, and I don't think there is or ever was an intention for sexism. That's, that's alarming. That's really alarming. Um, uh, I will go to... Um, Clarkson to give a um, if a response if he would like to, and then we'll have an audience question because um, we do have one I think coming in. Um, speak to uh, Dean by the way, the other Welsh if you want to ask a question. VC by the way, because he's met the mod for this. Anyway, uh, Clarkson, take it away. 
thank you very much, Dean. I would like to um, reciprocate on the behalf that individuals do consider uh, remarks to be sexist, but that is down to the individual and the way they interpret it. That remark was not considered, and um, the individual who launched that remark, it was not intended to come across as sexist, and therefore it is up to the person um, concerned to decide whether it's sexist or not. It is the personal opinion of the individual to make judgment on that, and the individual who released the comment did not intend for it to come out in a sexist capacity. Thank you, Dean. Uh, mm. William, yes. you're the Minister for Justice and Equality last term, met India 99. Uh, he he was going around, when we were in the, the door arguing on legislation, uh, he called the leader of the opposition a little girl numerous times, like sit down little girl statements that he's talking down to them using gendered language. He did that to the can caller as well. Now, I received affidavits from the leader of the opposition and the, the can caller. They took serious offense to this. Uh, he literally went around calling deputies and the can caller little girl, talking down to them using gendered language. Now, this is, of course, screaming like women is another example of Sinn Féin being sexist as hell. You're, you're not electable. Can, do you stand by those comments? I mean, Michael McGrath did. Uh, if anything, he, he, saw it, he saw it as a satirical point. And you've got him as your tornister. Do you stand by those sexist comments? I myself would not make such comments, but I also um, go back to the fact that I raised earlier that people can interpret um, comments relating to a potential sexist nature in their own regard. I personally did not consider them to be offensive to me as an individual, but I can yeah, see you're how... Not a girl. You're not a girl. Little girl doesn't apply to you. You're not a girl. You can't speak on behalf of the victims. But saying, oh, I, I didn't find it sexist, so it can't be a sexist comment. That makes no sense, William. You just said it was sexist, and you're a male as well, so isn't that a conflicting story of account? No, because I literally said I have affidavits from them themselves saying they took great offence to the very obviously sexist statement. I don't have to be a girl to see it as sexist, but you being a man, sitting here and saying that's, that's not a sexist comment because it doesn't apply to me, that's effectively what you're saying. It makes no sense, William. Can you not see this? I can see how it would affect certain individuals' views on, sex, on, a, on a sexist behalf. However, I, um, I I am being told by the network to uh, move it along, so I will uh, have to move it along. I apologise, gentlemen. Um, I do encourage you to use your DMs because you know what happens in the bedroom stays in the bedroom. Anyway, um, just this next general. question we have from a member of the public, uh, Epic Noah, who will be uh, joining us just momentarily to ask his question to uh, both of our representatives. Um, so if we can bring Epic Noah on to ask his question, that'd be wonderful. Let's see if we can. Um, as if he's here, I hope he is. He better be, otherwise he will be harmed in mental ways, not physically, that would be illegal. Um, so yeah, some, someone bring him on. Quick. Pronto. I can only waffle for so long before he can get here. Like, we're gonna wait uh, patiently for someone to bring epic noah onto the stage because jesus christ come on so, someone give me mod in this bloody stage channel like honestly he's been invited noah stop going toilet and get here get on this stage <laughs> we'll come back to him very soon um, I'll ask some quickfire questions, actually. I'll do quickfire while we wait for him. Very simple questions. Um, membership of the European Union, yes or no? Uh, we'll start with uh, Sinn Féin. Um, Sinn Féin is open to negotiations with the European Union, but uh, Sinn Féin does not att is not intending to become a member state of the European Union. We believe that okay. maintaining key relations with intergovernmental uh, organizations is appropriate, but we do not want to join. Thank you. Uh, I'll reiterate yes or no. Uh, Valorist. Uh, Labour will aim to have close relations with the European Union. Uh, of course, that comes under the international cooperation that we wanted. As for joining uh, the European Union, that will be the choice of the people should they want a referendum. Right. And uh, Connor of Fianna Fáil. Yeah, most like all of the other parties, the relation will stay strong. And again, <clears throat> it's up to the people to decide if we want to join. And that's the way it will stay. 
All right, absolutely lovely. Um, random question I will ask in order to buy some time before Epic Noah finally gets here. Um, are any of the parties planning to amend the Constitution of Ireland in any way, shape, or form? Genuinely, I'm curious, because more referendums, you know, just funny thing, really. Um, Sinn Féin, go first. Present, uh, Sinn Féin seems, sees no reason to uh, rectify or amend the Constitution. Uh, but, however, if an issue did come up that would uh, conflict with the Constitution, um, that would obviously be looked into by the Sinn Féin cabinet. Thank you. Right. Noah is here, but we'll come to him in a minute. Uh, Valorist, go ahead. Uh, the constitution is is fine as it is. I've actually I've got a whole Google Drive of possible amendments, but I don't see any reason why they should be proposed. I think the constitution is just fine, so I I doubt any uh, amendments will be coming up. Fair enough. And Connor of Fianna Fáil. Yeah, there was a slight proposal to change it. And that would be in our manifesto. So that's free for people to look at. I'm not going to go into the big details of it now, but people are interested, it's in our manifesto. Can you give us a brief, like, one-line summary of it for people who can't be asked reading? So amend a few different acts and how we can make the country more accessible. Thank you. Um, we will ask a few more questions because we do need to wrap up soon because... Um... It's pretty late, at least for me. I need to go to Betty Buys and get back to slaying in my dreams. I can't tell if my voice is still high pitch or not, so that probably yeah. came out really weird. Oh, great. Um, but yeah, I'll ask the next question. Uh, we've got a lovely list of them right here. Um, if I even can find the question. Oh, here we go. Um, this question is directed towards uh, Sinn Féin, and it is asking, uh, what are your plans, William Clarkson, for aviation in Ireland? Well, um, under the uh, appropriate authority concerning the uh, department, uh, uh, concerning the aerospace area, Consider uh, concerning the aerospace uh, uh, aviation authority, uh, rather, Lucy has been doing an excellent job regarding pilots' licenses, and we hope to bring more legislation concerning that to build to the backbone of the aviation authority and hopefully make it a more productive sector. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I will bounce the question of our other representatives as well. Uh, Valerist, what are Labour's plans for aviation? Dean, Labour is going to work with. Uh... With the Irish Aviation Authority, we're going to work with Lucy. We're going to make an airport game for commercial flights. We're going to bring commercial flights to Ireland. We've already helped them work on a massive new airport in Bankrana. Uh, and I I've personally gone out and got my, my private pilot's license. I love aviation, and more specifically, I love Irish aviation. I helped write the, uh, the act that brought them into existence. I love Irish aviation. I'm going to be here for it. We're going to be bringing in local businesses to work in, in our airports, bringing more jobs, more employment, uh, and more purpose to these businesses. Uh, we're going to introduce regulated small commercial flights between Northern Ireland and Ireland. We're going to put us on track to reach the increase of 15% in domestic employment, as we were promising, of course, through that scheme to bring local businesses more intertwined with aviation. Uh, really, to sum it up, we're going to put a lot of work into aviation because it, it's a it's a sector that if you get it right, it can it can reap massive, massive benefits. And we have full trust in Lucy uh, as CEO of the IAA. Mm -hmm. And uh, to our Fianna Fáil representative, Connor, uh, what are his Fianna Fáil's plans for aviation? Yeah, so I think the IAA have done a phenomenal job, especially for Lucy. Props to her for the progress she's made. Um, we'll continue to try to support um, the IAA and whatever they need, I'm sure we'll be able to facilitate for them. But so far, I think they've been doing very well on their own. And again, props to Lucy for everything she's been doing. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, we have a question now for all parties, and I will go to each party as I, say, as I ask it. Um, in, or, in the name of greater equality in Ireland and to live up to Ireland's place in the world... Uh, will all parties commit to hosting a Glaslow um, Pride Parade in order to bring the community together? Um, it's only fitting this goes to the Valorist first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for you, specifically, because of course you say <laughs> that for you with your voice. Um, I mean, before, because obviously we I've given you the answer, yes, simple as. 
uh, before we go over to, I assume Sinn Féin is next. Can we really trust what they say on equality, considering their local government minister is a xenophobe, uh, and their past Tornister and Minister for Justice and Equality is a sexist? Can we really trust them on equality? I mean, whatever they have to say next, I wouldn't trust. If they're going to come out and say, yeah, we're going to ho host a pride parade because we love gay people, I can't trust that because they don't like immigrants and they don't like women. Uh, so, and yeah, you can see an Irish general, uh, they're actually, the, I'm assuming you mean Michael McGrath, uh, called the Efsler. So I, I wouldn't trust what Sinn Féin have to say about equality. I wouldn't give it the time of day. All right. Uh, we'll go to Sinn Féin next, William Clarkson, um, your statement or answer. Thank you very much, Dean. As much as I would express my, um, support to the LGBTQ and those who identify as a homosexual nature, uh, Sinn Féin do not believe that bringing uh, real-life issues to Roblox is an appropriate thing to do, as it would just cause more um, issues than not supporting it as a start. So, as as to so to confirm, no, we do not. Um, oh yeah, what do you mean by homosexual nature? Well, those who identify as a homosexual, of course, um, quite self-explanatory. Okay, yeah, but you're kind of talking down to them, homosexual Absolutely nature. Not. <laughs> I'm I'm going to like force my way out, like into that uh, argument there, and I'm going to just move straight to Fianna Fáil to give their answer because I'm not liking where that's going. Connor, take it away. Uh, yeah, thank you. So I think we would love the idea for this to happen. Obviously, we'd have to work with the development team and group staff to be able to facilitate it. But there's nothing wrong with it. I feel like people should be able to enjoy the event when it does happen and if it does happen. But obviously we would need cooperation from group development and group staff, which I believe they would have no problem with facilitating. Mm -hmm. um, and on that bombshell of a question, I do think it's time to end. Um, I do have to thank all of our representatives assembled this evening, uh, Valorist of the Labour Party, William Clarkson of Sinn Féin and Connor of Fianna Fáil. Um, I can't really thank the two parties that didn't arrive, but uh, thank you for Potato Cure of the Social Democrats for at least trying to arrive. Um, thank you to Welsh for, you know, organising a and Ashton, of course, for organising a quick solution to the uh, issues earlier. Dean, I'm sorry and, uh, to, uh, to interrupt you. Can yeah. we get closing statements? You know what? I will give you closing statements, sure. I will go to, although I I'm doing yours last, though, just because you were the one who asked. Um, uh, we'll go to Connor first, if he has a closing statement. Connor, go ahead. Um, yeah, go through. They will do anything you want. Mm. You can waffle. <laughs> um, I hope you have a great night. Uh, we move on to William Clarkson of Sinn Féin. <laughs> uh, thank you, Gene. I'd just like to um, end by thanking you and the team here uh, for uh, bringing forward this uh, electoral debate. And I'd also like to thank both of my political opponents, Valorist and Connor, for uh, debating such and bringing much needed uh, political debate to Ireland. Thank you very much. And thank you, of course, to the audience for spectating and, ask, and mm -hmm. the select individuals for asking their questions. Thank you very much. And uh, now to Valorist of Labour. Thank you, Dean. Uh, listen, to everyone that's listening, uh, you've got you've got three choices, right? In in about fifteen minutes, you'll have three choices. One, do you vote for the uh, what we've clearly seen: sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, uh, no ambition at all, Sinn Fein, uh, who talks down to homosexual people and women? Uh, do do you vote for the, your second option? Is do you vote for a, a lesser significant party, maybe Fianna Fáil, maybe the Social Democrats, who exist to just uh, prop up a government? Uh, or do you vote for Labour, who have a serious plan, who've come to this debate and exposed Sinn Féin for what they are, who've come to this debate and, and spoken assertively, spoken passionately. We've addressed your issues. We've addressed what you want to see changed. We're the only party, we're the only choice that's worth making. It's, it's that simple. We are the only choice worth making. We're the only party that will stand by your side because we are on your side. Vote Labour in about 14 minutes. Right. Um, I have been given a statement by the uh, Social Democrat leader, and in the name of the fact that he did try to arrive, 
I will read it out on his behalf because, I mean, look, he, he tried, all right, he tried, so I will read it. Um, and this is from Potato Cure, representative of the Social Democrats, just to quickly get that out of the way. He says, if you as a Warner Media, I'm sure that this debate has reinforced your decisions for who you are voting for, whether it's for us or not. But I can assure you that the Social Democrats' policies are the most realistic, the least flawed, and that we can be the ones to put Ireland on the road to greatness. If you wants to put our nation back on track the social democrats are the right choice for you and that is from potato cure representative of the social democrats and that's all the closing statements um shin um i don't know why i'm being sent another one by Sinn Fein, but i don't care but on that bombshell it is actually now time to properly end thank you to all our representatives dean ashton um sorry fake dean ashton and the entire audience for participating. Um, I think every debate should be held in this way from now on. Uh, but I think everyone tonight slayed. Um, and I hope one of the parties has won over your heart as well as your vote. So um, that's all. Um, yeah. Uh, good night and farewell, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, get voting in like how many minutes? Uh, 12. In 12 minutes, you better start voting because otherwise turnout will drop and parties will lose the confidence of the public and then we're going to end up with a military dictatorship. Do you want that? No, you don't. So uh, vote, vote, vote. Good night and farewell. Yeah, vote Labour.